Hi everyone, this is Reza Moazi and I'm going to introduce you to data mining through this recording. Hope you enjoy it. So what exactly is data mining? Basically in data mining you are trying to find useful patterns in data and drive knowledge out of data. Sometimes you use your discoveries to explain what's going on in your business and inform your strategic decisions as well as tactical ones and sometimes you use your findings in predicting the future. Data mining is also known under few other names such as knowledge discovery in database, intelligent data pattern analysis, data archaeology, information harvesting, business intelligence, and more. We are going to talk a little bit more about business intelligence and I will try to give you a good idea where in the business intelligence data mining stands. Data mining versus business intelligence. Business intelligence is an umbrella term that combines architecture, tools, databases, analytical tools, applications, and methodologies. It is a content-free expression, so it means different things to different people. BI's major objective, though, is to enable easy access to data to provide business managers with the ability to conduct analysis. As you can see in this picture, it has many components. One major component of BI is data warehousing and its related concepts and technologies. Data mining technologies usually are built upon data warehousing technologies and use the results or output of such technologies as its input. Together, this whole package of data management and analytics is usually called business intelligence or BI systems. So data mining and its related technologies is usually only a part of bigger business intelligence system or a BI system. So what are the potential applications of data mining? You've heard a lot about data mining, now let's consider uh, more general applications and uses. Here I only talk about some major and well-known applications of data mining, but there are many more and in fact you might be able to come up with some unique applications on your own depending on your business and the type of data you have access to. Market analysis and management is one of the major applications of data mining and some even say that marketing is the mother of data mining as very early applications of data analytics and data mining were invented to address some important business marketing issues. Customer profiling is one of the applications of data mining in marketing in which data mining can tell you what types of customers buy what types of products. Another application of data mining is in the customer requirements through identifying the best products for different customers or predicting what factors will attract new customers. Data analytics technologies is also used in providing summary information through various multidimensional summary reports and statistical summary information. Under the corporate analysis and risk management, data mining techniques are used for determining what should be the price point in each market for maximum revenue while considering competitors' pricing. Analytical techniques are used in assessing risk of entering new markets and risk of developing new products. Also, data mining techniques and technologies have, are widely used in healthcare, retail, credit card services, telecommunications, and many other industries. These techniques are used in historical data to build models of fraudulent behavior in order to identify similar instances in your data. For example, in medical insurance, data mining is used to detect professional patients, rings of doctors, and rings of references that abuse the insurance provider. Before we go further into data mining concept, you need to be familiar with different empirical models that are used in data mining. In general, you can divide data mining models into predictive and explanatory. When it comes to explanatory, you may see different descriptions or different names that are referring to somehow similar concept. You may say 
different authors or different teachers refer to explanatory analysis as descriptive analysis, profiling, exploratory. Also, generally, predictive analysis and predictive models are supervised or directed. Descriptive or explanatory models are usually unsupervised or undirected. You can see some examples of supervised data modeling techniques here under the classification and regression. Classification itself, it does have many other methodologies within it and regression as well. We have different kinds of regression. Under unsupervised, you see clustering and association rules. The difference between supervised and unsupervised is that in the supervised or predictive or directed, you are pinpointing a target variable. You are identifying a target variable. The target variable that you are identifying is used later for prediction. However, under unsupervised or undirected or explanatory analysis, you are not identifying a target variable. Under the undirected data mining, in most cases, you are trying to explore, you are trying to find different trends, while under the predictive analysis, you are trying to predict. So they have a different approach, but they're both under data mining. Remember from previous slide, we had classification and regression. Some of the classification techniques can also be used as prediction techniques. Let's say that decision trees. It's a classification technique, but it can be used for prediction as well. While clustering, again, is a classification technique, but it cannot be used as prediction models or prediction techniques. So what you see in this slide, it tells you that there are some overlaps between classification and prediction for you not to get confused later on. In predictive data mining or directed data mining, you are always trying to predict or estimate something. That thing will be your target variable. A very typical example is a binary response model, such as a model to choose customers for a direct mail or email campaign. So which customers you are going to choose? Those who are more likely to respond to your campaign. The model is built using historical examples of customers who have responded to previous similar campaigns. The goal of this data mining effort is to find additional similar customers in order to improve the response of the next campaign. This may seem like a simple example, but diving deeper into the problem reveals additional levels of detail. The goal might not be to simply maximize response. That's just the first goal. Another reasonable goal is to maximize overall revenue for a given amount spent on the campaign. This in turn requires estimating both the expected response and the estimated revenue per responding customer. This picture shows such a two-step model that I just explained. It combines the response rate and estimated the spend to obtain an expected value. Note that the two models are built using different model sets and different subjects. The response model is based on historical data of everyone exposed to campaign and the target is whether or not the individual responded. The estimated spend model is built only on those customers who responded. And the target is the amount that the individual actually has spent on the product. Now let's get into the methodology for data mining. Uh, each author and each expert on data mining may come up with somehow different methodology. And up until a few years ago, there has been many different methodologies. Each industry had developed different steps, different set of steps that fits the industry for data mining. A uh, few years back, a couple of industry experts came together and they came up with something called cross-industry standard process for data mining or CRISP-DM in short. So some data mining books, they'll just adopt the CRISP-DM and will go with it. But most authors, they change CRISP-DM a little bit uh, to fit their own mind 
or their own industry better. But overall, the number of steps and the order of steps should stay the same. If you have taken system analysis and design class, you know that uh, there are different methodologies for system analysis and design, starting with the waterfall model up until now that uh, we have more object-oriented models. But when you compare and contrast these models, you see that they are very similar in terms of the order of steps that you need to take to get from the beginning point to the end point and uh, they all have a feedback loop and they're all iterative so the same thing for data mining it doesn't matter which author or which book you look at most of them follow the same steps starting from business understanding going to data understanding data preparation modeling evaluation and deployment so sometimes you see some authors that are more data oriented they may have more steps between data understanding and data preparation but you will not see data preparation coming before data understanding so it always starts with a solid business understanding and ends with deployment the ultimate goal of data mining is to make better decisions is to help you or the decision makers to make better and more informed decisions the goal of data mining is not and I again tell you is not to let the computers to make the decision for you is to inform you or your managers to make better decisions now let's see what actually each stage in crisp DM methodology means in data mining so starting with the business understanding you have to start gaining some knowledge about the business and the start point is to figuring out what is the purpose of the project define its purpose then after you figured out the purpose of the project you have to figure out what data should be collected or what data you need access to whether this analysis is a one-time analysis is or it's going to be ongoing so if it is ongoing you will need ongoing access to the source of your data and then you have to try to translate the business problem into a data mining problem meaning that you have to translate the business problem that usually comes from managers and the board of director in general terms you have to turn it into more specific measurable terms these are broad terms that may come from your board of directors or from your managers that they want to gain insights into customer behavior or they want to discover meaningful patterns in data or they want to learn something interesting these are broad and general terms you have to change them into something measurable and break these broad goals into specific ones such as identify customers who are unlikely to new their subscription so that's insights into customer behavior but you make it measurable by defining okay go ahead and figure out which customers are going to leave us under or they're unlikely to new their subscriptions so we can come up with strategies we come we can come up with ways to keep those customers or another specific goal might be determine which web transactions are pro are possibly fraudulent again that helps you save some money and increase the income and it doesn't hurt to be even more specific such as identify the 1000 gold level customers most likely to defect within the next 60 days now you even put a limit or a number on the number of customers that you want to see as a result of the data mining task you also have to figure out how the results will be used and this is one of the most important questions to be asked you need to know if you want to use the results to target group of customers or individual customers depending on the how the results should be used you may have to come up with different uh, ways of modeling for example for group customers you want to come up with a group like this female customers between ages of x and y with median household income ranging between a and b that's group so you can 
come up with flyers and send it to that group or if the goal is to come up with individual customer you know pinpoint individual customer to send a direct and individuals marketing campaign such as emails or individualized coupons then you will have to go with a different uh, strategy different modeling technique to make this more clear let me give you an example a few years back a grocery a huge grocery store tried to figure out how customers are approaching their yogurt so they contracted a consultant company to help them understand their customer behavior a little bit better the consulting company got to work and they eventually came up with something called yogurt lover score and the model was really good and the consulting company was very pleased with it and the model that the yogurt lover score was that at the time of checkout depending on what are the content of the basket for the customers and what are the purchase history at the time of checkout a new coupons would have uh, uh, been printed based on a yogurt lover score that was calculated using an algorithm so the algorithm would have gone and investigate the previous purchasing behavior and the current content of the basket and would have given the customer a love yogurt lover score and based on that score the store could print individuals coupons at the time of checkout but the client was disappointed with the results and they were asking who is the yogurt lover the consultant company responded someone who gets high score from the yogurt lover model but the answer was not good the client the grocery store was looking for something like the yogurt lover is a woman between ages of x and y living in a zip code where the median home price is between m and n a description that could be used for deciding where to buy advertising and how to shape the creative content of the ads however the yogurt, the yogurt lover score was based on shopping behavior rather than the demographics and it was not good for the client so it is very important for you to figure out how the results will be used will be used to target a group or will be used to target individuals or some combination in between that helps you to determine how you uh, what data you need and how you need to model your data another is important question to be asked at the time of business understanding is how will results be delivered when the primary goal is to gain insights usually reports or presentations filled with charts will do it when it is pilot or one-time project list of customers or customer segments to receive different campaign material will do it when it is ongoing project a computer program that runs our model on a regular basis to generate the results is what you need to deliver and finally you need to know how can you get good answers about th these questions what do you think where you can find answers to how the results will be used how will the results be delivered whether it's one time or ongoing analysis and what is the purpose of the project probably you're thinking right you need to start with business owners involve business owners stakeholders board of directors the person who is sponsoring this project the, the, the person who came to a consulting company the person who is seeking your help or persons who are seeking your help you need to ask them first you need to go to them you need to go to the decision makers key decision makers you need to talk to the senior management and employees you need to talk to those employees and management who will use the results of your work directly and then you need to talk to IT department to see what databases are available that's the and that has the answer to the what data should be collected or what data is available to you what technologies are available to you 
After figuring out the business problem, you should make a wish list of data that would be useful to have for your purpose. Useful and available data sources may vary from problem to problem and industry to industry, even from one business to another. So one of the first questions you need to answer in this stage is what data is available? Is there a data warehouse in the business? Do we own a data warehouse? What databases exist? And are data models consistent across different databases? So this means uh, that uh, whether similar fields refer to the same concept across different databases. Let's say that in one database you have first name, last name. In another database you have first name, family name, or first name, surname. So you have to make sure that the data models are consistent across different sources. It is a usually difficult job. It is not going to be easy. You have to talk to many people in different departments to make sure that the data models are consistent, to figure out what data sources are available to them and thus what they can share with you. And remember, waiting to gain access to perfect and clean data is a sure way of killing a data mining project. So sometimes you need to tell yourself, that's it, that's what I have access to. Those are the resources that I have. They are not perfect, they are not clean, but you need to start working on it. The next question is, how much data is enough? And there is no simple answer. It depends on many things. It depends on the algorithm that is used in your model. It depends on the complexity of your data, the number of variables. The more the number of variables, you need more data. You need more number of rows. And how frequent the data is updated. That's another thing. The statisticians have spent many years finding answers for this question. How much data is enough? One good thing about the commercial world is that there is, also, there is usually plentiful. The data is plentiful. Businesses have been doing business for a while and they've accumulated a lot of data over time. Limited data usually results in data mining projects that are not as effective as or as useful as desired. So you have to make sure that you will get as much data as you need. And typically the more the merrier, but not always when it comes to data. The smaller but balanced sample is highly preferred to a large one-sided sample. And uh, what do I mean by a smaller and balanced sample? Sample data that contains sizable examples of all possible outcomes that you are interested in. I will talk more about this later. And how much history is required? Predictive data mining usually uses past data to make future prediction. But how far past? Again, there is no simple answer for this one. You have to consider if there is seasonality. Data from far too past might not be really relevant, especially if you are in a vibrant and dynamic industry that its dynamics changes every few years, such as IT industry. The first thing to consider is seasonality. Most businesses display some degree of seasonality. Sales go up in the fourth quarter. Leisure travel goes up in the summer. Health insurance claims goes up in the fourth quarter after deductibles have been paid. You also have to consider any regulation changes. Has there been any recent regulation changes that affects your customer behavior or that affects your data? Typically, for many customer-focused applications of data mining, two to three years of history is appropriate. However, even in such cases, Data about the beginning of the customer relationship often proves very variable. What was the initial channel? How did you sell this product? Did you sell it through web? Did you sell it through, through telemarketing? That can tell you a lot about the customer. Or what was the initial offer? Or how did the customer initially pay? The next question is how many variables? In most cases, you have to let the data talk for itself. You should not rush into getting rid of any variables. 
that you think that are not contributing to your goal. In most cases, before you go for predictive analytics or for a directed data mining methodology, you will run few undirected or unsupervised methods on it. You try to explore data and during those exploration phase, you will get a better understanding of which variables you need to include in your predictive models and which ones are not really useful. It is very important to spend time exploring data before getting into model building. You need to start with examining the distribution. A good first step is to examine a histogram of each variable in the data set and think about what it is telling you. You should make note of anything that seems so surprising. If there is a state code variable, is California the tallest bar? If not, why not? Are some states missing? If so, does it seem plausible that this company does not do business in those states? If a gender variable is in your data, are there similar numbers of men and women? If not, is this expected or not? Pay attention to the range of each variable. Do variables that should be counts or dollar amounts take on negative values? Do the highest and lowest values seem reasonable for that variable? Is the average much different than the median? How many missing values are there? These are the type of questions that you need to ask while you are trying to get a better understanding of your data. You have to compare values with descriptions. Usually variable descriptions tells you about the range, tells you about if you should expect some negative numbers in that range or not. You have to compare and contrast values with the description to make sure they match. Then you can use the scatter plots to find simple trends and validate any assumptions about the relationships between two or more variables. And at the end, if possible, create a model set. A model set is a subset of your data and is going to be a balanced sample, as I mentioned in the previous slide. Data mining algorithms perform better when different groups of your, your target have the same number of members. For example, you are trying to predict consumer spending. And based on your past data, you categorize your consumers into high spenders, medium spenders, and low spenders. Typically, in a large data set, let's say that you have 2,000 uh, customers. Usually only maybe 100 of these customers are high spenders. The rest of them fall into medium and low spenders and maybe majority in the medium spenders and a little bit maybe another 200 in the low spenders. So if you just go with a random sample or a representative sample of your customers, you will get many more customers representing the medium spending group compared to low and high spending group. A balanced sample is a sample, let's say that you want to have a model set or a balanced sample of 100 customers. A balanced sample, a good model set, is a model set that has like 33 high spenders, 33 low spenders, 33 medium spenders. Because you are building a predictive model and predictive models use past data, use training data. You need to train them well. You need to have enough instances of each group so you can train your algorithm. You can teach your algorithm how to predict them. Let's say that out of 100 examples, of, uh, out of 100 records in your sample set, only 5 of them are high spender and only 10 of them are low spender. The rest are medium spender. Your model is not going to do good, is not going to be good in predicting high spenders and low spenders. It may do an, uh, it may do a really good job in predicting medium spenders, but not the other groups. So if it is possible for you, you need to create a balanced sample set to be used as your training sample. And in reality, most of the times, more interesting groups, such as high value customers, are underrepresented in your data set or in your database, thus the need for creating a balanced model set. You also need to include multiple time frames. 
to balance for seasonality that's another dimension of the model set so one dimension is uh, to have equal number of uh, different groups of your target variable another dimension is to make sure that if you are going to have seasonalities you will have data coming from that season so it can be used in your model and it can be used to train your model after you acquire the solid and good understanding of your data it's time to prepare your data for mining Remember that presence and type of problems with data depends on the data mining techniques employed. So what does it mean? It means that for some techniques missing values and outliers are not important. For others they cause all sorts of problems. So you need to know which technique you are going to use. So you can better prepare your data for that technique. Also, you should look at the categorical variables with too many values, such as zip codes, countries, occupation codes. Usually, it's a good idea to group these categorical values into more inclusive values. In other words, you need to increase the granularity of these uh, categories. You can, for example, replace zip codes with median home values. You can do more with them or you can aggregate zip codes into counties or into cities you should also look for a skewed distribution and outliers they can be problematic for techniques using means and averages. you can take care of these problems to some extent by standardizing and normalizing not normalizing your sample but not always the problem of missing values it's an important problem. As I said, it may not really matter for some techniques, but more often than not, you have to do something about them. The first thing about missing values, you have to figure out why they are missing. Are they expected? Are they due to data entry error or sensor malfunction? And what do we mean by expected? Let's say that you have a form that asks about the last date of pregnancy now you have a male responding to that survey so you expect to see the last date of pregnancy missing for a male subject right it's due to your survey design it might be due to data entry error if it is due to data entry error it means that the value exists it's just you don't know somebody forgot the person who was in charge of data entry forgot to put it in so you go back to the source and try to figure out what it is if it is a sensor malfunction in itself can tell you something maybe you can uh, open up a ticket with people who does the maintenance of these sensors to make sure the sensors are going to be fine you know for the next time so there are different strategies when it comes to missing values you can leave them like that it works for some techniques but more often than not you have to do something about the missing value as I said you can replace them with an appropriate value. So what is an appropriate value? It's a big question. Depends on your business, depends on your data. Sometimes you can go ahead and replace it with average. Or sometimes you can go ahead and replace it with an another variable. Sometimes you're looking at a variable that is a drive variable, meaning that it is uh, it is a combination of few others a few other variables through a formula and now there is a missing value for that and you might be able to go back to the formula and estimate a good and semi-accurate value for that another strategy is to exclude records containing missing values from analysis so if you have a record if you have a respondent that skipped many questions in your survey or there are subjects that are records that many variables are missing then you can go ahead and safely remove them from your training set another uh, strategy in dealing with missing values is to drop the, va the variable with lots of missing values from the analysis let's say that you asked about social network engagement or uh, if there is if there are some social networks that your subjects are engaging with that you have not asked so far so many of your subjects did not respond to that variable did not respond to that question so 
it will come out with a lot of missing values you can go ahead and drop that variable especially if the variable is not really affecting your target variable you can go ahead and drop it another thing to look for during the data preparation is inconsistent data encoding i briefly mentioned this that you have to make sure that your data description matches across different sources so various sources often represents the same data in different way as i said the example of last name surname family name and finally you may have to do some data transformation such as adding drive fields or grouping classes of categorical variables as i mentioned earlier normalizing standardizing or turning counts into proportions again depending what you want to achieve from your data mining what is the goal of data mining what is the delivery for data mining you may end up doing some data transformation after your data is cleaned and ready now it's time to go ahead and model at this stage you need to choose a data mining technique depending on your business goal your target variable if it is continuous if it is categorical and depending your other data characteristics you need to figure out which techniques suits your data and your business goal the most choose that technique and start modeling you also need to choose the data mining application is the goal to predict something or is just the exploratory analysis do you want to do a directed or undirected analysis if you want to do a directed or predictive analysis a rapid miner and all tricks are your best bets they are easy drag and drop R is very versatile it's very powerful it's good both for exploratory and predictive analysis tableau on the other hand is really great for visualization and exploratory analysis but not good for any type of predictive analysis you also have the option of sas spss sas and spss are more used in academic settings but both of them are trying to get more into analytics and predictive analytics market especially sas you also have you may have the option of sap expert analytics which is really good both for uh, exploratory analysis and predictive analysis and there are many other platforms many other products so one thing as data miners or one thing as data analytics experts that you need to know you need to know different tools you need to know their weakness and their strengths and at the time of modeling you need to choose which one you are going to use sometimes you will have to use more than one especially as i said rapid miner is really good for predictive analytics tableau is good for exploratory analysis so if you want to do a comprehensive job you are going to use both or if you have access to sap expert analytics you can just use that one after you are done with modeling now you have to determine whether or not models are working you need to answer questions such as how accurate is the model what are the precision and recall values for different outcomes different categories or how much confidence can you place on the model's prediction how generalizable the model is and the results are so you, these are the questions that you will learn how to answer them and many are come up with different measures for these questions you need to know that different data mining techniques require different methods for assessment so you cannot use the same method and measure that you use for a regression model on a decision tree model they will use different methods and they will use different measures with drastically different meanings when it comes to evaluating a model you usually split the model set into training and testing and you will remove the target variable from the testing you will use the training uh, section the training set uh, to build your model and will test your model on the testing and then you compare the results with the actual values you remember you're splitting your all your previous your past uh, data set into training and testing and removing the target variable from testing essentially you know the values of the target variable for 
the testing portion of your sample. You just remove it to test your model. After everything checks out and you're happy with the performance of your model, then you can move your model from assessing mode to scoring mode. Basically, you will use past data as training and then you will use the current data as a scoring. Deploying models can be quite challenging, especially if you have to work with the real-time data. If that's the case, in many situations, you will need to collaborate with computer science experts and data space experts so they can integrate your application, your model into their databases. And at the end, when your model is deployed, it's time to interpret the results. And the interpretation is twofold. One relies on your, on your statistics knowledge so you know which readings are good or statistically significant if if that makes sense within the technique which ones are not good and then you have to interpret these and come up with actionable business suggestions that's your domain knowledge and your business knowledge after you are done with interpreting the results and coming up with your actionable business suggestion you need to answer this important question did your model help you achieve your business goal that can be difficult to answer there are two dimensions into it you can either answer it through tangibles or intangibles oftentimes you have to consider both so what are the tangibles that you can use in assessing whether your model and whether your data mining effort help you achieve your business goal. You can go and look at how much the modeling effort cost you and how much extra revenue did you generate because of the predictions generated by this model. Whether the cost and benefit ratio justifies the effort and how much savings did you achieve as a result of this modeling. How much you lost so these are the tangible questions that have tangible measurable answer and you probably can come up with the, the, the answers to these questions we can also consider whether your data mining efforts improved your customer satisfaction you know that the customer satisfaction will lead to customer loyalty and better word of mouth so it is not easy to measure how improvement in customer satisfaction uh, resulted in revenue increase but we all know that uh, higher customer satisfaction will result in higher revenue and did it help you in better shaping your business strategy or not as a result of this modeling effort could you make better decision again you know if you could make better decision or not based on some measurable and maybe some intangible or unmeasurable outcomes over your decision. Do you have happier employees? Do you have happier customers as a result of the suggestions that came out of the data mining effort or not? At the end, you have to take what you have learned in this process and redo the process again, especially if you or your supervisor or manager uh, were not happy with the results of the data mining effort maybe the business goal was not very clear from the beginning and uh, you did not know what should the results look like remember the example i gave you on the yogurt like uh, the yogurt lover example where the consulting company came up with a yogurt lover example for each individual customer while the supermarket or the grocery store was looking for a group of customers that they can address and they can buy they can buy specific ads and shape their creative content or maybe data has some expected problems maybe you can go back and try to figure out new sources for your data or maybe you understand that more than one technique can be used oftentimes you can use more than one technique you can use both decision tree and neural nets or you might be able to use different kinds of regression each technique will have different evaluation 
so you have to use all those techniques and see which one fits your model better and which one does a better prediction and you should know that unexpected problems can occur anywhere in the data mining pro uh, process some of which we could foresee some of which I talked about in this uh, recording but there are many more and here are the books that are used in preparing this recording and this lecture uh, two of them are required books for you for your class uh, but the other two are not you are welcome to go ahead and take a look at the rest the, the other two that are not required for your class and this slide concludes our recording on introduction to data mining